Um, you're talking about the growl is actually uh, a weakness. Mm -hmm. And and I really started trying to put things together um, with all the different things that you've said, and we'll, we'll go into a little more depth here in a minute, but they are a lot like fucking humans. And you, you reiterate that in all of your publications and all of your content, and that everybody else who doesn't know, to include me, takes that as like some serious aggression. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that dog is, you know, getting ready to rip my head off, which <clears throat> I still think they are. But when you said that that's weakness, um, it made me think nine times out of 10, the loudest motherfucker in the room is always the weakest link or the biggest shit bag, yeah. you know, and they're hiding some kind of insecurity, which is what you said, uh, when a dog growls, it's because it's, uh, I believe you said it's fear. But anyways, I just kind of want to breach that subject uh, with the dog psychology and and, uh, and 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 how similar it is to humans. Yeah. So if you think about it in the context of uh, any time that you've ever been around a dog that's growled at you, uh, you know, what is generally the human being's response to a dog growling? Fear. Was is they in terms of the physical action that most people, if you walk up to a dog and it growls and shows its teeth and kind of pops its jaws, do most people go for, go forward and continue fucking with the dog, or do no. most people say, "Ooh, you know what? Maybe <laughs> I'm gonna fucking back up on this one." Yeah, uh, that's why they do it. Is that you know for whatever the reason is. Now I I think it is imperative to caveat that while growling is is ultimately that the dog is uncomfortable. Uh, scared, uh, or at a minimum, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason, whether it's pain or confusion or whatever, is that the dog does not want whatever is taking place to either continue or advance. If that's you, then it is what it is. If it's a stimulus that the dog runs into and, and it makes him nervous, you know, sometimes you may be walking and something happens and it's not even a, a person and the dog will start growling because they're not sure what the fuck it is. You know, is that it's a defense mechanism the same way peacock feathers are. In that it, it's trying to communicate, you know, the same way a guy in a bar is like, I'll fuck you up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you shouldn't have to tell me that. You know, I should either know that or you just do it. You know, and, and so with a dog, a, a good, supremely confident dog isn't going to fucking growl. If he wants to fight you, he's just going to fucking fight you. Yeah. Um, now, just because a dog growls doesn't mean that he won't bite you. Uh, depending on, on where he's at in his fight or flight mentality uh, and physically environmentally where he's at if the dog is over in that corner laying down and you walk up and, and it growls even though it's fucking scared if it's got nowhere to go and it feels like okay it should or get off the pot and i gotta fight this guy then they will and i will also say the dog that growls and, and bites after he growls is gonna bite hard as fuck because he's scared really you know that the same way yeah i mean you, you see it in bite work a lot in the suit where when you start to get into a dog's head and make them uncomfortable and, and you may get a little growling, uh, you know, on a bite. And, and sometimes it's, it's less related to fear. Sometimes it's, um, you know, a host of other intangibles that are going on that uh, are probably beyond the scope of this. But, um, but most of the time it's because the dog is a little uncomfortable. And so, uh, but what you can feel is that, you know, if you start to get in that dog's head and he's a little growly while he's biting, a lot of times, you'll actually feel it and he's biting even harder because now there's adrenaline going and the same same thing if you know when you hear the stories of uh you know kids getting trapped under cars and the fucking 70 year old grandma picks up a volkswagen uh you know because their their kid was trapped under it you know when, when adrenaline and all these hormones uh, are, are going through and their central nervous system is fucking taxed and whatever is that uh, now it's it's kind of fighting for your life, or in this case, biting for your life, and and many times they'll they'll bite even harder in those circumstances. So, um, w where you kind of use that to your advantage as a human being is is looking at the big picture. Is you know is the dog behind the fence, and you're coming over the fence, and they're growling. In that case, like yeah, if if you pull that that dog's card and and uh, call his bluff you can get them to run if you're committed and you have the ability to use your presence to communicate to that dog motherfucker i'm not scared and i'm coming after you in in those cases then you know almost every single time the dog's gonna be like you know what i'm fucking out of here um, yeah. if i'm working a dog and they start growling then i'll i'll investigate it further i'll i'll start doing whatever i was doing you know to get him to growl i'll, I'll back off and see if he'll get comfortable when he does i'll do it again and see if he growls again 
and back off and then do it again and see, you know, what it, what is it about what I'm doing that's getting in his head to make him uncomfortable. And I won't say that it doesn't matter what it is, um, but you may not know exactly why what, what you're doing is, is having that impact. What's important is to work him through it. Uh, ultimately, uh, as a trainer, decoy, etc., it's, it's our goal and our job to make the dog stronger. So if you expose a weakness, you want to you want to work him through that and build his confidence through that. If I'm, you know, in adversary, a dog is coming at me and I don't know the dog and, and whatever the situation is, then yeah, I'll use that to, to exploit that weakness and, and ultimately try to uh, try to defeat the dog with with whatever he's uncomfortable about. But so you know, a lot of it's going to depend on on kind of what you're doing with the dog, but. To your point, um, you know it's it's a, an important indicator of where the dog's mind is at more than anything. And, and I will say that for dogs across the board is that our job is to read them. You know, and, and they tell you a shitload of information if you a know what to look for, uh, b pay attention, and c do it enough to where you know you, you understand why why they're doing what they're doing. And so. Uh, a good handler and a good dog owner, period, should be able to look at their dog and know what the fuck's going on, uh, just because they've they've observed them a lot. But, so, uh, so you, <clears throat> you can take a dog that's uncomfortable, that's growling, and 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 you can and you can reverse it. I would say usually. Um, okay. Depends on how bad it is. Um, it depends on how slight or significant what I'm doing is to make them growl. If it's something really fucking basic and 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 me not not trying to do it, okay. um, you know, then then it's probably going to be a bigger problem. You know, in in bite work, as you <clears throat> as you try to progress the dog through, the goal is to make them stronger by building their threshold for stress tolerance. And that's really the the key concept of bite work is to teach them. That when I put stress and pressure on them, I want them to respond by natural forward aggression and, and coming forward. And so countering in deeper, uh, biting harder, pushing forward, wrapping their legs around your leg or, or whatever they can get, get their paws on. Uh, you know, different indicators that say that that dog is, is coming forward and bringing the fight to me. And then what I do is I use all of my body language and I take that pre- uh, pressure and stress off of the dog which in turn reinforces to the dog that what he did was what turned the pressure off. And so when you do that over and over and over is that you condition the dog to understand that, hey, this guy may smack me and stab me and punch me and try to throw me in a trash can and slam me up against a car door or whatever. Uh, And if I fight harder, then I will win. And so you're, you're just... It's the same reinforcement principle as the dog sits and you give him food is, is that when he when he fights me the way that I know that if he fights me that way it's gonna it's gonna maximize his percentage of, of chances to survive that encounter and I reinforce that by t- by turning all of that pressure off now he feels emboldened you know and so now he he becomes even more confident and then I put stress and pressure on him again I get in his head I rattle him a little bit and as soon as I see that I freeze I don't put any more on. But I don't take any more off either because I don't want to reward him getting fucking a little squirrely and being in his head. So as soon as I do that, I wait for him to counter in. And it can be the most micro, uh, you know, counter or aggression or, or indicator that he's bringing it forward. And the second he does that, I turn into a fucking gazelle in a lion's mouth and let him completely fucking dominate me. So that now he's like, fuck, that, that, that's what did it, you know, and, and you just keep going back and forth, back and forth, overlapping those, those drives that way, um, ultimately conditioning the dog to, to be as strong as, as his genetics will allow him to be. His genetics are always going to dictate and determine how strong you can make that dog and how much pressure they can take. Uh, there's going to be a limit to every dog. Some dogs can take a truckload. Some dogs, you know, you're tapped out a little, a little shorter than that or even a lot shorter than that. In terms of the growling question, that's gonna gonna tell you a lot about how far you can get with a dog, and you're you're only gonna know once you start kind of navigating those areas, pushing the envelope, putting pressure on them, seeing where they start to crack, and, and seeing how they they develop through that. 